G'day, I'm Nev Sweeney and this is Under the Chogo Tree. This week I want to start a new series, one on how you can water your garden much more efficiently. Here in Western Sydney the summers seem to be getting hotter and we've been using quite a bit of water. So I've been experimenting with some different techniques and I want to show you some of them. In general when you want to make the best use of your resources, one of the first things you should do is an audit. That is to say, see where the, uh, the big picture items are in your consumption. And water is no exception, so I'll leave a link uh, down there to, for you to click on, which will go to our website and show you how to do that. Uh, when I did it here for the Choco Tree, one of the things which turned up, I suppose not all that surprisingly, was that a lot of our water went in growing our food. So that stimulated me to try and do it much more efficiently. So this week I want to talk to you about Oyas, spelt O-double-L-A-S. Those watching who speak Spanish, I would like to apologise for my really lousy accent. Uh, very efficient way of watering. Basically what you've got is an unglazed terracotta pot buried in the ground. Uh, you pour water in the pot, the water seeps through the walls of the unglazed terracotta and keeps the uh, root zone of your uh, veggies moist. There are a couple of ways of doing this. One way is to start from scratch. If uh, you've got experience in pottery and uh, you can uh, make and fire uh, glazed pots then it makes it a lot easier. These are This is one that I made uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I was learning pottery and using the uh, the layering technique basically built it up from scratch. I didn't throw it on a uh, on a wheel. Uh, it's about six litres. Uh, the big boys who, who know how to do this really well do them around the 20 litre mark. Um, but these, I've got about uh, half of our veggie patches are irrigated by these things and they seem to work very, very well. Um, not all of us have the time or the energy to learn how to make uh, our own pots. And so there are other ways of doing it. And one way is to use normal terracotta pots. Again, you've got to make sure that uh, there's no glazing of any description, otherwise the water is not going to get through uh, to the plants. You stick them together, put a block in the bottom, and I'll show you how to do this uh, very, very shortly. You can make it to whatever size you want. Uh, you can make them large, or you can make them small. It's whatever is most appropriate where the root zone of the crops you want to irrigate are, uh, and so on. Uh, there is a disadvantage in using the Oyers uh, based on a terracotta pot uh, with the system that we use where we have the chook tractor going over the, uh, the beds is that unfortunately what the chooks have a tendency to do is to kick the, uh, the top off and then it gets full full of all sorts of stuff so that at some stage I have to pull it out and empty all the material so that uh, we can fit enough water into it. This is one of our three metre veggie patches and uses the made from scratch oils in a diagonal pattern. Um, I know that it looks quite uh, weedy at the moment. We've just harvested all our onions and it's waiting for the chook tractor at the moment. But you can see the oils buried up to their necks in the soil uh, with the lids on top. Uh, the idea being that it keeps out any snails and uh, slugs and stuff which like to hibernate down there. Okay, the first step in making our uh, pot oils is to block the drain hole in the first pot. The easiest way to do that is get yourself a bit of polyethylene plastic, put it down over the hole, use your silicon to fill up the hole. Now in terms of the type of silicon, um, I like using the wet area stuff. I don't know that makes a lot of difference. I've tried a few different types. and. Uh, it seems to work okay whichever way you want to do it. With the hole filled we now have to allow a bit of time for now the next part set. of the process while it's not critical can make things a lot easier. Um, you'll notice with the top of these larger pots they tend to have a flat profile so not so much of an issue. With the smaller pots it's more rounded you can have difficulty getting coverage with the silicon. So with all of them what I do is just place them on sandpaper, rotate them I've got the sandpaper uh, stapled down to some timber to hold it steady. And I just turn it around and I keep doing that until
until I've got a good flat profile on the top of the pot. Then uh, I do that on the other pot before I put them together. Okay, so the silicon blocking the, uh, the drain hole of the bottom pot has now gone off. What I'm going to do is join the two pots together, top to top, to make the oya. And I do this by placing a bead of silicon around the top of the pot that's going to be on the bottom. Uh, the big hint with this is don't try and rush it. Slow and steady wins the race and make sure you've got a, a good solid bead all the way around so you don't get any leaks. silicon all the way around the top. I can now fit the top pot. You can move it around a bit if you need to and hopefully you've got some silicon being squished out from between the two. You can just run a finger around, or thumb in this case, and smooth it. One of the things to be careful of if you are making a lot of these guys is when you're spreading the silicon around make sure you wipe your hands really well uh, between each one otherwise as you're manoeuvring them, getting together, doing the sanding you can wind up putting a thin coating of silicon over the top of the unglazed terracotta and then it's not going to be working very well to transmit the water through so um, clean hands in this case is really important. So now um, we're finished with this guy He's now complete. Um, just to make absolutely sure, it's always a good idea to put some water in and test him. Make sure that it's holding water, you don't have any leaks that you can fix before it goes in the ground. Because once it goes in the ground, you're not going to go be able to know whether it's leaking or not. Okay, so as a test, I have filled my brand new oil up, once the silicon has had time to cure of course, with water to test it. And as I look around the seam, I can see no leaks at all which is a good thing but also if you'll notice through the pottery we're starting to get some uh, dark discoloration which shows that the water is starting to move through which is what we expect it to be doing in the soil okay just like to show you how to install it uh, obviously it needs to be dug into the ground to work and the easiest way to do that is with a post hole digger So now our hole is dug, it's an easy thing just to fit in our, uh, our oil. Now if you're having trouble uh, because the, the soil is too hard, a good thing to do can be to dig down a little bit, then run the hose in, let it soak overnight, and you'll find the digging much easier the next day. So insert the oil in the hole, run the fine stuff in so it goes down between the side of the hole and the oil. So there you have it. So that's how to make and install an oil. Uh, it's a low cost, low tech, but high efficiency way of irrigating your veggies and other crops. Um, if you like what I've been talking about, then please leave a like down below or a comment or subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.